friends, Wendy Blight here, and I'm really, really excited for the opportunity to do Bible study live with you um, in my house, in my kitchen. So welcome to my kitchen, and I can't wait to answer this question, although I'm going to probably answer it broader than it was asked, but it was a question about why Moses wasn't allowed to go into the promised land. What exactly about what happened at that rock, the speaking, the striking, what was it that made him not go into the promised land? And to give a really full answer to that, I wanna take you also backwards to a story in Exodus 17. And that is, um, it's gonna be helpful as we look at the, the lesson about this in Numbers 20. So if you have your Bible, go back to Exodus 17. This is the first time that we read a water from the rock story. This story takes place in Exodus, the other one in Numbers. What, what's, what is it about these two that um, are different? Well, if we look at the book of Exodus, Exodus describes, let me get this right, it records the events leading up to the Exodus, all the things that happened in, um, you know, with the plagues and with the giving, uh, the parting of the Red Sea and giving the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. These are things um, that happened in Exodus and one month after Exodus. And then that's when we pick up in Numbers. Numbers records all the events that happened one month or so after Exodus ends. And that's where we find Numbers 20. Those are the 40 years of wandering. So you've got the first part of their journey, and then you've got the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness that is covered um, in, in the number 17 story that we're talking about. And then if you care, Deuteronomy picks up in the 40th year um, after the, it picks up at the end of the 40 years when they're just about to go into the promised land and Moses gets the law. So that's a little background. We're going to be in Exodus 17. This is another story of water from God, God helping Moses bring water from the rock. This time it's early in their journey and they are in the desert of Sin, S-I-N, and it's the, the, the city's name is Rephidim, I believe. It's, uh, I think it's R-E-P-H-I-D-I-M. And they had no water. They're early in their journey. So here's what they say. Uh, they say to Moses, they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink because there's no water for them. And Moses said, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there. So they grumbled and they said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and our livestock die of thirst? Hello, this is just, this is what they say all the time. We're tired of it, I think. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said this, here are his instructions. Go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. Okay, so he was in front of the people, he got the elders, but now he's going away from the community. And, he's, and then God says, go. He said, I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out for all the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. So God said, get this staff. It was the very same staff that he used during the plagues where he put it in the water and the Nile turned to blood red. Um, so he got the staff and he went, but then he left the community and just he and the elders went to the rock at Horeb and then he did what God said. He struck it one time and then the water came out. So that's what happened in Exodus 17. Now, let's go to Numbers 20. Here's my mark. I found this in my kitchen. It's a $2 bill. I don't even know if some people know what that is now, but um, that's the only thing I had to mark my page. So. Um, now we're in Numbers 20. Now we are in a different location, the desert of Zin, Z-I-N. This is um, about 40 years probably or more, a little bit more. Um, I'm not very good at the math part, but just know this is basically a new generation of Israelites that are now complaining to Moses because it's at least been about 40 years. So once again, this is what we read in Numbers 20. They arrived at the desert of Zin and stayed at Kadesh. 
There was no water for the community and the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. They quarreled with Moses and said, if only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Again, again complaining. Why did you bring the Lord's community that we and our livestock should die here? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? It has no grain or figs or grapevines or pomegranates and there's no water to drink. So first of all, notice that they were complaining about everything now. They weren't just completely thirsty and that's all that they wanted. They were complaining about everything. So Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance of the tent of the meeting and they fell face down. This would be the tabernacle. They fell face down um, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. So they were obviously in the inner courtyard because we know that only God is in the Holy of Holies. And the Lord said to Moses, take the staff, same staff that he used before to strike the rock in Exodus, same staff that he used during the plagues, take the staff, same staff that turned into a snake or when he was first getting the call, and take the staff and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together, speak to that rock before their eyes and it will pour out water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community so they and their livestock can drink. He just said, speak to the rock. I'm assuming he just wanted the rock to like bring water out of this rock. Um, and so Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence. He obeyed that just as God commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock. So now he's doing this in front of the whole community, not just the elders, like in the first story. Everybody's there watching Moses and what he's doing. And Moses said to them, listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff, water gushed out and the community and their livestock drank. So we can see God didn't tell Moses what to say, but I'm thinking God probably would not have approved of him saying, listen, you rebels, because God did not seem angry with the people. It seemed as if God was being very merciful. He didn't even address it. Like so many other times we've heard God just call them wicked and evil and rebellious, but he didn't do that here. And so that's one difference. This was done in front of the whole community. This time he was to speak to the rock, not strike the rock. God said nothing about raise up your arm. Those are many differences that we see. Okay, and then it says, but the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. We don't really know what it was about this situation, Moses' actions that made it so that he wasn't trusting God and honoring that he was holy. But I know what we know about God is he looks into the heart. And there was something in this event that he looked into Moses' heart and he was disappointed and um, hurt. I don't know if he was angry, but could it be because Moses was prideful? He was there this time in front of the whole community and he wanted to make a big deal about it and he succumbed to pride. I don't know. Was it because he um, was angry and he let his anger get the best of him and he yelled out, you rebels, must we do this for you? God didn't maybe want to see anger in his heart. Was it um, because this rock in this situation in the Old Testament, the rock is a foreshadow of Christ. I found this in several commentaries. If this represented Christ, we know that Christ died once and for all. The rock was it, striking it once was fine, whether that represents he was pierced once, where the blood and water poured out up on the cross to determine that he was fully dead, whether there was just one crucifixion, but the point is, if Christ represents the rock, the fact that he struck it twice could be another way that was dishonoring to God and to Jesus, um, or to the prophetic picture of the rock being Jesus. Um, I hope this helps you. A lot of times in scripture, there's 
not really a right answer. We don't know for sure, but the lesson we can take away is that God desires obedience. And when we don't obey, there are consequences. He forgives, and we absolutely know that he forgave Moses because he was so gracious that not only did he let him go in the promised land, maybe not walking in with his, you know, earthly feet with all the people he had been traveling with and leading all these years, but he got to be brought by Jesus and put his toes into the promised land on the Mount of Transfiguration and stand by Elijah and stand by Jesus and be there with the, the Jesus three most um, closest disciples. So anyway, I hope this helped you. It was fun to be with you today and we want you to know that we continue to pray for you and when we ask these questions, keep asking them because we can either answer them at Bible Study Live or we can write things or we can invite you back into my kitchen. So I hope this was, was really helpful and just know how much we love you and please pray for us. We are at She Speaks as you watch this. Bye.